Hello everybody and welcome to another Brother Crypt video. Um, today I wanted to discuss the topics of how to evaluate a successful ICO. Um, usually I don't actually partake in ICOs. The reason that I don't usually take in partake in ICOs um, is that I believe it's one of the most riskiest form of investments. However, with that said, I did invest into the BitConnect X um, ICO and my opinion um, sort, sort of with the BitConnect X um, ICO sort of contradicts um, my usual logic rationale set of rules. Let me explain. So, for example, the reason that I invested into the BitConnect X ICO is because of BitConnect's performance in 2016. Having looked with BitConnect, um, they are a cryptocurrency that I trust, um, that I actually promote. Um, but even if I was to take away the aspect of my promotion, um, I am confident of BitConnect based on their performance from 2017. Um, they created their roadmap for last year and they actually executed everything on their roadmap. They actually handled everything with diligence. They said to me, if you invest over $20,000 um, in our lending platform, we will pay for you to come out to uh, Pattaya for that uh, first annual ceremony and they actually did this they actually um, sent me one they actually sent me some Bitcoin for me to be able to buy my flight and for me to pay for my accommodation um, amongst other things during 2006 uh, 2017 their website went down similar to the denial the DDoS denial of service attack, which is currently commencing right now on, um, what's today's date? On January the 14th, as we speak, their website's down. But there have been a few times which their websites have been down and then they've always got back up, especially in the sort of perceived area of lending platforms or high yield investment programs. Uh, BitConnect does shine a very bright illuminating light so therefore in my opinion they have actually won my trust which is the reason that I invested into BitConnect X. I think this year though um, some of my strategies will be to acquire more established coins um, those in the top 10 those which are the up-and-coming ones in the top 20s and I will be looking at ICOs However, with me looking into ICOs, I'm going to have a, a strict set of criteria which I, which I wanted to share with you so you are aware of how to um, sort of evaluate and successfully invest into ICOs. Um, whilst I commence, please be aware that this is not financial advice. I'm just sharing my opinion with you. Um, if you make money, don't thank me. If you lose money, please don't blame me. Okay. So, what is an ICO? Um, this image, you know, states us states to us that it's a mix between an IPO, initial public offering, and online crowdfunding, but for cryptocurrency, which is very true. Um, If we look at the ICO history, um, we can see that Bitcoin um, was one of the first cryptocurrencies released in 2009, but shortly after that, in 2014, Ethereum um, had their ICO and they raised 18 million. Um, there was also the DAO, which uh, stands for, I think it's just give me a moment. I think it believe it's decentralized. Well, 
autonomous organization. That's it, excuse me for the wait. Um, so the DAO, this actually was a failed ICO, but they did raise quite a bit of money and then they vanished. And Filecoin, I believe Filecoin um, up until September 2017 was one of the biggest ICOs which raised $200 million plus. Now, what we can see is that conventional equity fundraising to blockchain firms uh, versus ICO funding um, prior to the last, um, prior to the second quarter of 2017, um, traditional funding, traditional equity funding was the best way for, for companies to get funding or for blockchain firms uh, to receive money. But last year in 2017, after March, um, initial coin offerings, ICOs were the best way for institutions to, to raise funds. Um, this trend continued in the third quarter and probably the last and everybody's now talking about ICOs uh, for them to have initial coin offering. Kodak being one of the largest institutions to enter into the ICO phase and um, if they have the right technology, I think Kodak might do well as long as there's a, a clear value proposition to what they're offering. Okay, now, some of the things, you know, that I would recommend for people when they're um, investing into an ICO, um, is you know you need to be smart with your money um you need to research the cryptocurrency and you need to you know be smart with your money be smart with your crypto research read the white paper and observe uh the roadmap before buying into the cryptocurrency um Partly why I'm doing this video is because somebody in our group um, actually sent links to the Digitex uh, Futures ICO. Um, now this person, they didn't include any sort of the fundamentals I would expect. All they said is basically that this ICO looks good. Here is the link and if you do um, invest into the ICO, please use my referral link. Now, this is okay, it's understandable, but my response to, to that post was for me to make this video, which I'll be dropping into the group, because it's not really fair for me just just not tell somebody to do think, do something. I really want my group and everybody around me to be educated in what they're doing. So I think if... Um, she had actually posted into the group about the ICO, one of the things I would have expected is for her to do her due diligence to bring to the group a basic assessment of some of the fundamentals based on some of the criteria that I'm going to get into it with you. Okay, but let's carry on. Now, for you to um, ascertain whether uh, an ICO is, an, is a good opportunity to get into, um, I would expect different criterias to be assessed. So firstly, you'll need to ask yourself, you know, does the project have a mainnet or does it have a testnet? Basically, a mainnet is a working or live product where we can observe and reference how the product works. So for, ex so for example, um, I can't think of any ICOs which are going on now live, but if we look at Bitcoin, it has a working blockchain. So for example, if if um, there was a Bitcoin 2.0 revealed and it had a working blockchain and it had real transactions going on, um, but then they wanted to release some money during an ICO, that would equate to a, a mainnet. Um, a testnet is a testing platform 
uh, with fake money or fake currency, allowing people to observe the potential of that platform. So off the top of my head, when I checked the populist website, um, I could see that they had a test net. Um, you're sort of able to look at transactional data, but it on the website it, it says very clearly um, that this is with fake money, that this is, you know, only a test net. So, in my opinion, um, a mainnet is uh, is live, which is if if a mainnet is live, which is big for a cryptocurrency, uh, because you can say this project is actually working here, uh, plus actual transactions are taking place on a blockchain. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to uh, ascertain whether uh, it has a working version or if there's a test net or if it's just a concept backed by a white paper. Secondly, you know, um, there are different components to what we should be doing. Um, as this article points out, you know, we should be evaluating the company and a company um, will consist of mainly different attributes. Um, it should be the team. You know, what experiences do the founders have um, and what does the t team consist of? You know, are there advisors to the team? Um, what is the experience of the advisors um, collectively or individually? What uh, problems has this team solved? Um, and basically, are they an all-star team? You know, one of the, what, uh, what, I've, what I've heard somebody say is basically, do you think this person would work for Google? Uh, do you think he would be hired by Uber? Do you think that um, he would be hired by some of the top companies? So, um, you know, and, and also on the final note of the team, are there any sort of, excuse me, on the, one of the notes of the company, you know, are there any strategic investments? One of the reasons that I bought into um, into Omisa Go was because Omisa Go has a strategic partnership with McDonald's and Omisa Go will be um, accepting payments for McDonald's in Thailand and I thought that's big, um, this company looks serious and obviously they have strategic partnerships with one of the largest fast food restaurants in the world. What's not to like about that? Okay. And then another thing is um, within the company, you know, how have they been formed? Um, how long have they been working together? Where where is their location? Do do we know? I think all of those factors should be taken into consideration when assessing the company and then the team. On the point of assessing the company, you know, what is the unique value proposition and what is the unique selling point? So, for example. Um, if we just look at the, the case of Digex, commission-free Bitcoin futures trading, um, me, in my opinion, I, I am not into cryptocurrency for me to make Bitcoin futures trading. Um, in my opinion, that just sounds retarded to me. It's... Um, I do not mean to talk negatively about Digex in any way. I'm just sharing my thoughts on um, this ICO based on the information that's come to me. Um, why I say it's, I'm, you know, I'm in crypto to use cryptocurrencies. Um, I'd like to create a better financial uh, life for myself. But at the same time, I want to get excited and I want to utilize this technology. When I look at uh, Digitex, I think that basically it's just a glorified gambling site because when we're talking about futures, we're going to assess whether the price of a crypto will be up or whether it will be down. Fair enough, you have the CME, Chicago Mer Mercantile Exchange, they have started to trade Bitcoin futures and then you have the NASDAQ coming into this space. So yes, you're going to see small companies like Digitex also want to go in this space. But me, in my opinion, with my limited understanding, I do not see why people want to gamble or take risks on 
Bitcoin's price in the future. I just can't see why that has any logical sort of uh, benefits. Um, I would much rather pre prefer to hold Bitcoin or I would prefer to much rather invest Bitcoin for it to make me greater returns in the future as opposed to um, estimating or guessing the price of this cryptocurrency in the future. Now, on the point of futures, I will say that um, I am aware that, you know, some people, they want futures to lock in a certain price. Um, I don't necessarily think it, it's going to help me. So therefore, in my opinion, I don't think this will be something that I would use. So I see, I understand the USP, I understand the value proposition, but I, it's just not something that would be for me. Okay, now, moving on. If we um, continue to assess why a cryptocurrency is important, we also need to check, you know, um, what other types of tokens um, that it has. So for example, what excites me right now are blockchain tokens. Um, before I get into blockchain tokens, let me just quickly share what the other types of tokens are. So for example, there are blockchain tokens. One, Bitcoin is a blockchain token. BitConnect is a blockchain token. Um, Ethereum is a blockchain token. Um, you have things like NEM as well, uh, which are unique blockchain tokens. Stratis, they are blockchain tokens. Um, and then you also have decentralized application tokens, um, which are also known as dApps. So for example, Tenex is a blockchain token. Um, I can't think of any more. But all, basically all ERC-20 uh, tokens are blockchain tokens. If I go quickly onto CoinMarketCap, there'll be a plethora um, which will stand out to me. Um, so Amisa Go is also a, a decentralized um, application token, um, Amizigo is also a DAP. Populous is also a DAP. And I think ARC is also a DAP too. Um, there might be some more that I've missed. And finally, you know, the last type of token is a decentralized autonomous organization token, also known as a DAO. Um, so a DAO token uh, is very similar to, to what was brought up earlier, um, that image that I had um, for the DAO, which, which failed its ICO. Um, they successfully raised, I think, around 50 million, um, but then they are no longer developing. So the difference between these tokens are, you know, a blockchain is a, a blockchain token is a cryptocurrency issued by the blockchain, as I mentioned, like Bitcoin or like BitConnect. It's the native cryptocurrency for that blockchain. Um, also, a DAP token, decentralized application token, um, are coins which are developed on a certain product and don't have their own native blockchain. So, for example, um, Ethereum has hundreds of ERC20 uh, tokens, which are basically apps, applications that are developed on the Ethereum platform. Therefore, uh, the apps don't have their native unique blockchains. They are dependent on Ethereum. Um, and then finally, the DAO tokens um, give holders the ability to vote on governance, but the creators of the tokens are the ones that create the rules on what the holders can vote on or what they can do. 
therefore rendering them as a smart contract with pre-programmed rules um, that describes what they what can happen in the system at any time. Um, basically, the different types of coin architectures, in my opinion, are going to require different types of governance. Um, they're also going to require different types of investigations and different types of research. In my opinion, blockchain tokens are ultimately um, house the most value because you're investing into infrastructure, you're investing into something new. There is a difference between the Bitcoin blockchain as opposed to the Ethereum blockchain. Now there is a difference between uh, Cardano compared with the Ethereum blockchain. So when you're investing into uh, blockchain ICOs, you're, you're investing into the infrastructure as well you're investing into something that that is new which has been developed differently and um, with with dapps decentralized applications uh, tokens it's actually requiring less of your technical ability for you to be up and running and operational in my opinion you know that requires less that that requires uh, more risk to invest in you know because you're investing into lots of these ERC tokens it really doesn't take much to start up a web it doesn't it really doesn't take much for them to start up their own blockchain um, they're based on their, their Ethereum, so really they're not really bringing anything new to the, they're not bringing anything new to the space, anything new to the market in terms of the technical um, innovation behind the coin. They might be fulfilling a unique use case, however, they're highly dependent upon Ethereum, which is fine for some applications, but with so many ICOs coming out um, this year in 2018 and on to the beyond, we're all looking for unique selling points. And I think your um, ICO will be more secure if you are building your own unique blockchain and not building on top of somebody else's. You know, finally, um, just a few more, you know, things for, for, for just a few more ideas for thought should be, you know, what are the caps? Um, is it an open cap or is it a closed cap? Um, basically, the cap is the capitalization. Um, if it is a closed cap, you know, then what is the amount? So, for example, going back to this Digitex Futures, um, their ICO sale starts tomorrow, the 15th. Um, let's just see if we can get a snapshot of their cap. Okay, so it looks like their hard cap is seven million dollars, which is not too reasonable. But then the total supply of their coins is one billion. Um, so their coins will appear cheap. You know, their coins will appear like not not one cents. But hey, these these guys have a billion tokens, and I believe they accept ether. Uh, from my research earlier, it looks like this is actually going to be developed on Ethereum as well. So there's no unique blockchain. Um, what you're going to be getting here is a DAP, a, D, a, a DAP token, a decentralized application token. Okay, and um, this one, it looks like it does a, have a hard cap, which is good, I guess. That's slightly in their favor at 7 million. Once they raise over a million, um, that will be the end of their. Um, once they raise over a million, that will be the end of their their ICO. That means that they're going to keep um, three hundred million coins for themselves. I'm guessing uh, seven hundred million are available in the ICO, and then there's going to be a total supply of a billion. So they're keeping three hundred uh, million coins for themselves. Um, now, I, a few other things I would look at is, you know, the, the white paper. Um, now, you know, this is what I wanted to see from the lady that posted this in our group. You know, I wanted to see from her that she had read the white paper or reference, you know, for her to read the white paper and make us as our group 
understand what is unique about this. Um, I haven't read this white paper fully, but looking at it, you know, I can't see a reason for me to use this. I can't see why loads of people would want to use it. Um, I don't like the fact that it's a DAP um, and I don't like the amount of coins that they have in circulation. I think one billion is far too much, you know, for, for some Ethereum um, ERC20 tokens. Um, and let's just quickly go back to see, you know, how will they use their funds? So let's look at the token sale. Let's see if they do tell us how they want to use their funds. Okay, so token supply and distribution, uh, 700 million available, 20% is going to market makers. That's for people, you know, gambling on their on their website. I say gambling lightly. Uh, that's, that's for people bringing volume and liquidity. Um, market makers are autonomous trading robots. Okay, programmed to break even. Their highly active trading supply and large bank and large trading banks help create liquidity futures markets that have the right bid or offer spreads even in volatile market conditions. So it's basically for their own uh, market making trading bots. Mm, this sounds dubious to me. Um, team and current future, they're taking 10%. These tokens are on a three year vesting schedule, ensuring the team has strong incentives to create a stable self. Uh, perpetuating business model that provides ongoing and consistent demand for for DGTX. Hmm. Um, so basically what these coins will be locked for three years. Okay. Um, that's 100 million coins, 10%. That's about $7 million. Uh, no, $700,000 is going to be locked away for 10%. I'm guessing if it's 10% of the total no, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it's gonna be, uh, so they're valuing this company at 10 million. They're looking to raise 7 million. Um, they're gonna have those 70, they're gonna have those 700 million coins, which are valued at 7 million. So therefore, if this is valued at 1 billion, um, this gives this ICO or this crypto an evaluation of 10 billion. They're going to tie up 1 million uh, for, for the team, current and future. Um, okay, so they have a three year investing schedule. So they plan to spend $1 million over the next three years. To me, that doesn't sound like much money for a development team for three years. Um, this just this just brings up inherent questions to me. Um, but, but you see, like, as we're going over the information, I'm sharing my thoughts out loud, which is a form of due diligence. And I would expect anybody to be reading what they get and then interpreting it with their own mind and making up their own conclusions. That's what it means to do your due diligence. And so far, when I'm looking at this, more questions uh, are coming up to, to light. So yeah, yeah, another final thing that I would also do is to, you know, look at uh, the community finally. So here, that's very good. They do have a community page. So what we can quickly do is just look over some of these um, some of these groups and let's let's quickly have a look to see if it's busy here. Okay, so they have about sixteen thousand members in their group. Um, it's a nice lot of people. It's a nice amount, I guess okay so here on telegram they do have a relatively large group um, they also have a forum it doesn't state how many users are in the forum uh, there's 16,000 members here okay we've got the white paper by Adam Todd 
and we've got their face I oh, know okay and we've got the ICO bench so I looked quickly at the ICO bench um, this is where I go to get a snapshot um, of an ICO to see how it's been assessed by another company and they gave it a 3.6 um, rating I believe 5 is their highest rating so 3.7 isn't brilliant but it's not that bad um, but yes yeah, this is just not for me okay guys so I'm gonna keep um, this video relatively relatively quick um, here we can see the ICO you know um, and the top comment says that he doesn't trust this okay so yeah guys um, I hope that's been helpful um, I'm gonna quickly summarize things uh, but just to give you a recap of what I was saying was that you know you need to sort of um, assess what is the main net or what is the test set or, or what is the test net you know what existing infrastructure do we have in place is it one that's tangible that can be used which is operational is it good, good to go or is it in a testing phase or is there no uh, platform currently uh, by the looks of it with that uh, Digitex I couldn't see if there was a main net or a test net so I'm assuming that was that there was none um, secondly you want to evaluate the company when you are evaluating the company you want to look at the team you want to look at the experience um, you want to also look at the um, advisors onto the team you also want to look at whether um, this company has any strategic partnerships with any other existing companies as well um, and then we also want to assess the value proposition we want to think well what is the unique selling point of this cryptocurrency and then you know we want to look at the types of tokens basically we, we want to look at the type of platform that it's being built on um, is it brand new and shiny is it a new blockchain which which should work differently to some of the existing blockchains you know or is it yeah they're just going to build it on top of an existing blockchain or is it going to be designed to allow for decentralized autonomous organizations in the form of a DAO so assessing the, the type of blockchain is very important um, in my opinion I only really want to um, invest into new blockchains and then also you know we need to consider the capital um, is it fixed or is it closed how much are they going to raise with the amounts that they've raised what are they going to do with it you know what's the distribution going to be and then also you know we want to look at the community um, are there large numbers in the community is it buzzing um, not just by looking at the numbers like I did briefly but actually reading some of the channels investing um, having an observation of what the people in the channels are talking about you know and what kind of questions are being asked and how are they being answered and then also we want to look at um, you know the white paper you know guys it's very important you read the white paper although you might not understand stuff just by you getting into the practice of reading white papers means that you will eventually learn and then when you have read the white papers um, at least you know what you're getting into and what's by design because at the end of the day this is your money and with so many ICOs um, coming into 2018 um, you're going to be able to formulate your own criteria of how you can successfully um, evaluate the ICOs that are presented just think um, I heard a few days ago that we can expect 5,000 ICOs um, in 2018 as opposed to the 1,400 ICOs um, that were presented last year this that means that on average there's going to be 14 ICOs a day so it's going to be overwhelming to investors so it's best that you have these fundamentals and that's why I compiled these, these, these videos so I hope you like this video uh, if you're new to the channel please do like this even if you're old to the channel please do like this if you found it helpful 
Um, uh, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe if you find that this content helps you. Okay, thanks for watching another Brother Crypt video. Take care. P peace.